Hey guys, so um, my last interview I had with uh, Timothy Gordon, I had two, uh, so the second interview, uh, I told him a story um, and I kind of gave him the back half because, uh, you know, someone once said, uh, to know others is wisdom, to know oneself is enlightenment. And the one thing I know about myself, I tend to talk a little too much. So when I'm interviewing somebody, um, I'm conscious of that. And I and believe it or not, I try and not talk as much. Um, so sometimes I get caught up in a story. And I'm like, oh, man, how do I end this? You know, how do I how do I shorten this? So I'll leave out a lot. You know, I don't I won't add to it, but I, I'll leave out. So the story may be a little different. And um, so I was telling um, I don't know. I don't know how we got on the subject, but. I was telling Timothy about a, uh, a time two of my Sicilian friends uh, got picked up uh, for a car that was stolen, but it was me and another friend, an Irish friend of mine, picked it up, uh, actually stole it, but they got picked up and their father uh, met them down in the police station. And you can see the whole story there because I don't want to... I don't want to talk too long in this video because I got to get to work shortly. The store is going to be open in about 10 minutes. But, um, but in the story... Uh, I didn't give the first half of the story. I didn't tell you how they got picked up. So what had happened was uh, me and my friend, we were about, I don't know, 14, maybe 15, you know, right around 14 or 15. We were driving a stolen car, and we're going to go meet my girlfriend, who's now my wife, praise the Lord, <laughs> uh, and her friends, and a couple of my other friends, these two Sicilian guys I talked about. Uh, Joe and John. But in the story, I was trying to shorten it. All I mentioned was John. And then it was funny because Joe, I haven't seen in ooh, maybe 25 years. He's living in Milan, Italy now. Uh, he actually commented, if you look on the comments of the Timothy Gordon uh, video, Politically Incorrect Questions, uh, Giuseppe, he's using his Italian name, but we call him Joe. And uh, his brother's name was John. But he actually commented, I think, on a different video, Gian. You know, that's like his Italian name. But anyway, Joe and John got picked up. But I only talked about John because John was the one his dad punched in the mouth in the police station. <laughs> Old school uh, discipline. But, uh, but it was a gr great traditional Italian family, really loving family, tight-knit. You know, really, I loved every one of them. Really good people, like good, wholesome people, you know. Um, but the front end of the story, um, you know, we're driving down this, uh, this one-way street. Just driving a stolen car and uh, really didn't have much driving. Honestly, the only driving experience I had was probably from three or four other stolen cars we had driven. And um, so cop car comes behind us, he puts his lights on and uh, I just floored it, went through like two stop signs and then turned probably, I don't know, going like 80 miles an hour and we barreled right into this big customized van and um, I was like ridiculously fast runner as a kid. And my friend was a little overweight and he wasn't that quick of a runner. So he, he was like, start the car up. I'm like, this, no, we got to run. He, he got scared. He thought I was going to leave him. I'm like, I'm not going to leave you, bro. Just we got to run. So we cut through this backyard, hopped this fence. The fence was like 10 foot tall, you know, the old wire fences. And I, and I just freaking hopped it like two. I just hit it once and hopped over. I was so scared. And I looked up and my friend's on the top. And I remember he was afraid of heights. I remember like we were like 10 years old. And we climbed a tree in his backyard. And he, he couldn't get down. Because once he looks down, he gets like paralyzed. And I remember his dad had to get a ladder and help him down. So I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, Matt, you got to jump. He's like, I'm afraid. I'm like, bro, you got to jump. He's like, I'm afraid. So I just jumped up and grabbed him and pulled him down. <laughs> he comes barreling down, smashes on the ground. He's like, oh, thanks, bro. I'm like, let's go. So we run. And we cut through some more yards. And then we're walking up another side street. And I see a car look at us. I'm like, oh, crap. And he's backing up. I'm like, this guy knows something, you know. So he's backing up. And my friend's like, we got to run. I go, bro, we run now. You're getting caught. I said, just wait for the right moment. So right after I said that, another car came down the street. So now you got cars parked on both sides of the street. It's a one way. I know there's no way this guy could get past him because he's like going in reverse. So I go, run. So we tear. We just run really super fast. And then I lived on a big avenue, you know. So we were just like darting through traffic. It's a wonder we didn't get hit by a car or a bus. We we're, you know, it's like, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night maybe, maybe a little early, but it was dark out. And we're darting across traffic. And I lived in an apartment building, so we just freaking barrel up the stairs you know i lived on the top floor and we're looking out the window and uh 
So we were both wearing leather jackets, and I said, okay, let's take our jackets off. I gave him a flannel shirt. I put on a flannel shirt. He walked home, and then I walked in with my girlfriend. We never got caught. And then I, you know, I tell the story, you know, get the second half of the story with uh, Timothy Gordon, where my friends got picked up by mistake, and their father was really mad. But um, anyhow, the point of all this is... Um, I was, uh, even though like, I got in a lot of trouble, I was kind of smart, and I was always in, like, the advanced classes, so I had a friend, uh, he was in one of the classes with me, and a real smart kid, never got in trouble, you know, didn't drink, didn't smoke, and we played, you know, I played on the baseball team with him, and um, he asked me what I did over the weekend, and I told him that story, and he didn't believe me, and he kept laughing, he's like, why are you telling me stories, and I was like, what's so hard to believe? And to me, this was like a normal weekend. I mean, if you, uh, the town I grew up in, Irvington and Newark, the two towns, like at that time, I think probably still, if you Googled it, they were like rated number one. I think Newark was number one in carjacking. Irvington was number two in carjacking. This is according to FBI statistics in the whole country. And then Irvington was number one in stolen cars and Newark was number two in stolen cars. So it was just like a game, you know, to us teenage kids. And, um... But to him, he lived in a different world. Even though we went to the same school, he, he, you know, he just didn't get in trouble. He just did his homework, went to school, went to baseball practice, and that was about it. So to him, it was unbelievable. He couldn't believe it. And he just never believed it. He would laugh. He was like, yeah, he'd just like, politely laugh. And I'm saying all this because I watched Peter Crift. Someone sent me a video, uh, posted it, one of my... Uh, subscribers posted a video for me to watch Peter Cripps on uh, some uh, podcast and um, the woman interviewing Creep says um, says that she knew a, a, a priest who was like a missionary um, to New Guinea maybe I think she said and um, these were like cannibals and he was uh, converting them you know uh, uh, trying to make them more civilized and become Christians and um, when he told them about abortion, what explained what abortion was, because they never heard of it, they were horrified. They couldn't believe that human beings would do anything so horrific. And these were cannibals. So it's just, um, it was unbelievable to him, you know. But Peter Criff took it a step farther. He said, yeah, I had a friend who was a doctor, and he had a friend who was a dietitian that worked for the United Nations. And they sent him to Zaire to... Um, help this tribe, this secluded tribe that's never seen anybody other than their tribe, like deep in the jungle in Zaire. And uh, they were dying off. And, you know, we wanted to preserve this tribe. has been around for, you know, thousands of years. They didn't want it to die off. So they sent a dietitian to teach them how to eat to save their lives, you know. And he did. But it took them like a year to gain their trust. He lived with them. And once they trusted him, they believed anything he said, and they seen that he was healing people through the food. You know, it's funny. I think it was Hippocrates said, uh, let your food be your medicine, your medicine be your food. But I digress. Uh, but anyway, his, the food, you know, the food saved him. He put him on a good diet. Um, long story short, they believed everything this guy said. They called him the great white father, and they trusted this man. And when he told these tribe men, tribesmen, about abortion they politely laughed like my friend did and they wouldn't believe him and he said i could not get them to believe me they just thought it was so ridiculous so insane how could what what woman would kill their own baby and pay pay to have it done they thought it was they thought it was ridiculous and it, it kind of you know it made me think of bernard nathanson um uh, one of the founders of NARAL, national abortion rights action league uh he was a founder of it because he became a millionaire killing babies. He later repented and became a Catholic. But he said that, um, he said, you know, if, if women's uh, bellies were transparent, that would end abortion right there. But we convinced them that it was just part of their body. They had their right, you know, their right to their body. It wasn't a separate body. It wasn't separate. We, he said, we basically lied. We knew we were lying to these people. And... I thought about it, and you know, this is, you know, I made a video the other day about Bishop Barron calling out the pro-abortion Democrats in Congress, and to me, it was a big deal. It was important um, because 
he exposed just how extreme um, these people are. I mean, he asked them politely, okay, let's dialogue, okay, you know, give and take a little bit. Would you ban third trimester abortions, abortions from six to nine months? And they said, no, absolutely no way. He's like, okay, will you ban partial birth abortion? That's like when the baby's in the canal and you're ready to give birth, you pull the legs out and then you stick a needle in his brain. We know that's the most excruciating way to die. Doctors have testified to this. Would you ban that at least, that barbaric? No. And they said, what about supporting the born alive act when a baby who's marked for abortion somehow miraculously lives and is on the table uh totally alive separate from the mother would you uh support saving that baby no baby's got to die so he exposed and just how extreme and radical this position is and a lot of us catholics that are involved in the fight saying you know I know a lot of people's first reaction was like, he was too polite, they're killing babies. But there's a whole segment of the population, and you know, I'm not on Facebook, but I'll go through my daughters, uh, and uh, I'll see what people are being, you know, what's being said. And uh, my sister had posted on about Kamala Harris supporting abortion to the ninth month. And then my sister-in-law said, that's a lie, no, that's fake news, that's not true. And so my kids posted, you know, proof that it was. Most people can't conceive what's going on in America. They don't even know. So Bishop Barron comes across to these people as a reasonable, moderate guy. You know, he's not a flamethrower. He's not mean and angry. So they, they tend to listen. You know, they'll shut off a lot of guys on the right like me and other guys. But they'll tend to listen to someone that speaks eloquently and politely like Bishop Barron. But he decimated their argument that... Uh, you know, it's the woman's right, it's the woman's body. And uh, he'll get a lot of views, I'm sure. So my point being is, we, we, you know, we, we've been in a fight so long, sometimes we forget. There's a lot of Americans, and, and I'm sure in Europe the same way, a lot of people, they don't even realize what's going on. They're thinking like, you know, the first trimester abortion, but abortion is legal through the ninth month in most states. And in, 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 in these Democrat states, even beyond, they won't even protect the baby if it's born and uh, the mother wants it to die. So a lot of what's going on is unbelievable. You know, a lot of Americans are like the tribesmen. They laugh at us. Oh, that's not true. That's not true. But it is. So we need to be informed, and we need to be as innocent as doves, but as wise as serpents in getting our message across. And every one of us has a different personality. We have a different gift. We have a different um, platform but we need to talk about this horrible, horrific, barbaric sin of abortion in our country. And we, and we need to fight against it. If we're buying or selling real estate, for example, please go to realestateforlife.org and you will get an experienced realtor who is pro-life and will donate his money to pro-life causes. So many of these companies we deal with, these large companies, donate to pro-abortion uh, candidates and pro-abortion uh, companies, so organizations. So please get involved, you know, do whatever it takes. I mean, but if you're buying a house anyway, that's a no-brainer. Go to realestateforlife.org. Uh, so that's all I got to say today. Uh, you know, some things are unbelievable, you know, most of you guys that are watching are informed. You know what's going on. So when you tell people that are uninformed, it's so unbelievable, they don't believe us. So we got to figure out how to get that message across. You know, Bishop Barron has his way of doing it. Uh, Michael Voris has his way of doing it. I got my way of doing it. But we're all on the same team. Remember that. If you're a baptized Catholic and you're pro-life, even if you're a baptized Protestant and you're pro-life, we're on the same team, brother. So, um, you know, we got to point out when we see, you know, see people going off the rails, sure. But at the end of the day, Jesus Christ is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and we serve him. We don't serve any president. We don't serve anybody but Jesus Christ. He's our Lord and Lord of, of lords, and he's our Savior, and uh, he loves life. He gave us life. And uh, he wants us to fight for life. So I uh, hope this was helpful. Stay Catholic.